Day 7, Watermund, Germany. So this is uh, right on the coast in Germany and surprisingly it's a destination for a lot of Germans to go to on holiday. So it's actually pretty busy. I agree. There were a lot of campers so it seemed like a lot of people bring their little campers and there's along the water there's like a ferris wheel so it's pretty kid friendly like a little festival and then there's like this little downtown area that has a cute little church and lots of cafes and restaurants and shops so it's a nice little area. From the ship, it's a little confusing to get there because you're going to come to a point where you think that you can cross uh, through like a tunnel to the train station. So if you're looking to go to Hostuck uh, or Rostock, you can cross under this tunnel. Well, you think you can cross under this tunnel, but you can't. They send you like all the way around this park area and then you're able to get into kind of the historic city center, which is along a canal. It's really nice. There are a ton of places where you can get their fish sandwich. Mm -hmm. That's what they're famous for. Or a fist sandwich, I believe is what you, <laughs> is what you called it. Um, you have a ton of options in terms of what kind of fish you would like to put in your sandwich. They all taste pretty much the same, I think, because it's the same sauce and the condiments and whatnot that go into the sandwich. It's just the fish. And there was shrimp too, so it's not just fish. I think they had shrimp and maybe some other types of seafood as well. Lots of options. So it's definitely worth trying. And then one thing about the one-way tunnel, that you, the walking tunnel, it might be a seasonal thing because it was quite busy, lots of people, and there were workers out there that were directing people around. So it could be something that's seasonal. Yeah, it wasn't that busy. What do we do in Germany? <laughs> so you get to the city center, or city square, I guess, where there's a big church, and it appears as if you can pretty much go any which way to see things, to see the, the cuteness, the quaintness of the town. But really, it's only a few blocks uh, in any direction from that uh, city square. Right, so it's nice to just meander around the streets, kind of weaving in and out. There's a little park, and it's just, it's very relaxing, calming. We didn't go to Hustock or Rostock, but uh, let's go ahead and get to that time of the segment. Would you expat that? Dun dun dun. Kaylee, would you expat Watermund, Germany? I would say no. It's kind of small for me, and I, I prefer bigger cities. So uh, I would not expat that, but I could see how it would be a good area if you're retiring. Mm. It might be a nice, quiet area to retire in. What do you think? Yeah, um, I'm going to go ahead and say no. I, it doesn't seem as if there's a ton of multinational or international companies there for people to have job opportunities anyway. But even if you're a digital nomad, I don't think I would. And the reason is I believe that your earning potential is not going to be quite so in balance with uh, the cost of living there. So what I mean is you're going to be earning maybe USD or Euro doing some sort of consulting work, but you're still going to be paying like, you know, German prices for things. It's not necessarily cheap. And I think the flexibility of the digital nomad lifestyle is where you can live in places that um, are a little bit lower on the cost of living and you can raise your quality of life. I don't think that you can necessarily do it there. Also, it was just really small. It was small. Yeah. Right, so maybe better for uh, a holiday. Yeah, good for a holiday. Maybe good for retirees who have a slightly higher than average fixed income. I have no idea how the healthcare is, so that could be something. All right, that closes out day number seven. We'll be back with you day number nine. Day eight, we're at sea. Day nine, we'll be in Klaipeda, Lithuania. See you there.